And all right, so you run Z Vision. You guys make taxi and landing lights, um, and well, also recognition lighting. But anyway. Okay, so you know I've I've heard a lot of things thrown out there: lumens, lux, candles. How do you measure light? Well, it used to be in 1948 is when the official change went from candle power, which people are still using, <laughs> but officially it was done away with and replaced with candela. And the numerical values are so close that for all practical purposes, they're interchangeable terms and the numbers are basically equal. I mean, there is a small difference, but it's so small it's negligible. And so candela has been the predominant term that's been used, even though it, a lot of people still mention candle power. And like I said, they are interchangeable. And um, that metric does have an effect on the total distance that the light will project, but it doesn't give you exact numbers. And you can convert that number as long as you know the distance and you know what the candela, the total candela is coming out the front. Mm -hmm. um, you can actually, there's actually apps on, on, that you can get from Google that you can convert that to, to lux, which is a more meaningful term to tell you how far the light will project in a useful manner. So lux is about how far the light will well, project. It's a total measurement, Okay. but it, it, it declines as you get farther away, which they all, all the measurements do that. But the lux is important because a full moon with totally clear skies, no pollution or whatever is a quarter lux, which is not useful. Anything between a one lux and a half a lux, for sure one lux is useful. You can read a newspaper on a half a lux. Okay. And uh, anything one lux and higher is for sure useful light, and that's how we determine the distance. We d use the one lux as sort of the, the Okay. The number for okay. that. Okay. So let's your your landing and taxi lights. Let's start. Let's start there. So how many lux are you producing out of yours? Well, again, you use candle candela okay. for the amount of light coming out of the union. Okay. Or you can also talk about lumens, and we'll come to that in just a moment. Oh yeah. Well, I'm sorry. I got ahead of ourselves. Talk lumens. But but well well lumens, the, the total lumens coming out of our light is almost eleven thousand. Okay. Which is a very high number. Um, most of the lights that are out there are going to not even be, not even half of that. Okay. And in fact, the old incandescent units were down, the old 100 watt incandescent units, I should mention, the PAR 36s that are so common, um, those were producing in the neighborhood of 1,200 lumens. Oh, wow. And you're, so you're 10x. 10 with the times the number yeah. of lumens, yes. But lumens in and of itself is not a very useful number. It tells you how much light is totally being produced by the unit, but it doesn't tell you where it's going. Okay. So it could be spread out over a very large area, which would be useless except for maybe taxiing right. uh, for what we're talking about. So if you want a true flood, flood light, you don't really want to talk about about lumens for that, except for the total amount of light that's being which, produced. Which brings up the other point on your taxi lights. I notice you kind of have, and I work in, I've got a theater degree and I work in TV and film, you've got what looks like Fresnel lights on the, the front of your taxi, so that is to spread it out further. Exactly, that's to spread out the distance that triples the width but doesn't change the height of the beam because you'd be wasting light if you made it spread right. vertically. Okay. Again, it's all about where you're putting the light is what's important too. The candle power number can also be used if you don't also mention the beam angle of that. You could have like a laser, you could have a very high candela number but it's useless because the light beam is so narrow mm. that it doesn't illuminate an area that, that you need to see. And so the beam angle is equally important when you're looking at, uh, at the light in terms of candela okay. or, or even the lux number for that matter. Because again, with a laser, you could have a very high lux number, but again, the beam ends up being so small, you can't really pick anything out. It, you know, it's illuminating the size of a rabbit, you know, downstream right. a half a mile. I mean, that's useless light. Yeah, you've got to- So I you really have to know the candela number, the beam angle number, and if you want to know how far it's going to reach as well, the, the lux number. So lux number, what what does that look like to your lights compared to what's out there? Well, we get over one lux at a third of a mile. Okay, one lux, a third of the mile. And, and a half a mile, we're about a half a lux. Half a mile, half a lux, what are the others out there doing? They're not even a third of that distance. Okay. We're talking about a couple hundred yards at most. So you're what, 3X? What's out there? Um, on, on... I'd say at least, yeah, at least that. Okay, so that is bright. So now, for experimental, it's easy. Um, what about for certified planes? What do we need to do to be able to, to put your lights in our planes? Well, we're, we're close on the, the STC situation. Okay. Sometime this calendar year, that should be in place. And then it's just a matter of adding different airplanes to the AML, approved model list. 
Okay. And the first the first airplanes will be the Cessna 100 series, which would be right. 152, 172, 182, and then it'll go from there. We've already done some stuff on Cirrus, and that's going to be a high priority as well, because there's right, so many out there now. Well, yeah, exactly. Um, and uh, the the planes from the factory are coming out with an LED light that's extremely low performance. I believe it's only 40,000 can. Yeah, 40,000 Candela, I think it's something like that. I could be off on that number. But most of the owners that do any night flying are converting it shortly after they buy the plane because it's inadequate. Why they went, they used to have standard HID in that airplane, 35-watt HID. And one of my competitors offers an HID for that as well. And so that's something we've been working on. We've already got one airplane done that's going to add it to the AML shortly for an SR-22 turbo. Nice. Okay, well, cool. Well, we'll uh, if, if people want to know more about it, if people want to buy, what, where do they go? What do they do? Well, the website, it, we, we sell direct. Um, and the website, you can't order through the website, but you contact us with the website with the phone number. And because uh, we like to maintain contact with our customers and not just have an order form. And, because well, we can make, make exactly what they need. Exactly. And a lot of times people don't know exactly what they need. And we mm. need to help make sure they don't make a mistake and order something that isn't really what they're looking for. Right. And that's an important factor. All right. So start at the website. Give them a call. You guys call back and you figure out exactly what I need. Well, their voltage. I mean, there's a number of factors we need to talk right. about, obviously. All right. Well, perfect. Dan, thank you. Thank you again for an awesome, awesome flight in the glass air. Never ridden in one. Never flew one. Loved it. So thanks for, for letting us go up. Yeah, you're welcome. I enjoyed it as well. All right.